because of the nature of the challenge, all of the lords of the court, all the knights of the court are petrified, they're terrified, and they don't want to rise to this challenge. They all seem to uh, gather the implications that if they do chop off this fellow's head and he can respond after that, then he's not human. You're dealing with something which is beyond the human realm and they will be in great danger in a year when they have to have their own head chopped off. This prompts ridicule, though, from the Green Knight. The Green Knight says this of, of the knights of the court. He says, What, is this Arthur's house that all men are talking of? Where are now your pride and your valor, your wrath and fury and great words? For now is the revel and renown of the round table overcome by one word, for all of you are terrified, though no blow has been struck. He laughs at them and he mocks them and, and, and he says, all your bravado and your talk of big deeds is, is nothing. It's, it's, it's uh, puny because you can't stand up to nature. That I think is a, is a very telling line because of course all of our civilization, all of our puffed up pride of humanity in the sense that somehow we are the, the top of the food chain means very little when we actually have to face our own death. It means very little when we have to face the forces of nature, whether it's a tsunami or a hurricane or a tornado or, or, or whether we have to face things like disease. We no longer seem to be full of such bravado when we realize that the human race is actually a very fragile thing. And in the midst of that, though, we are, we are deeply ashamed, I think, deeply embarrassed. And that's what happens to Arthur. Arthur, it says, the color rushes into his face and he's, he's ashamed at his own nights balking at this terror, but he's also angry that, he, that he, can't, he can't take on this challenge himself, that he doesn't rush forward and take the challenge immediately because he, like the other knights, is filled with fear at first. Well, he does rush in though and he takes the challenge eventually. He says, I will take this, this challenge from you and uh, jumps in to deal the blow to the green knight. It's ironic because of course Arthur was the first one to say, I want to see a miracle. And of course he gets a miracle. The miracle is this challenge to chivalry and this challenge to his own court. And then none of his knights will take that miracle. So Arthur feels, I think, somewhat responsible. And he, he jumps into the chance to show that chivalry can prevail. Chivalry will allow us to, to overcome the forces of nature. And he does have the courage to face death. But he's overruled by Gowan, who at the end of 15 says, I, Lord, will take on this for you. Uh, Gowan is moved, I think, in the same way that Wiglaf is moved by the plight of Beowulf in the great poem Beowulf, um, where he sees Beowulf facing the dragon, and he decides to jump in and save his Lord. In a similar way, Gowan uh, decides to jump in and save the life of his king, and we see his reasons for doing this in the next few stanzas. So let's look at that together.